So hello everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Kette Rang and I would like to introduce you today's speaker at the Looking Ahead Talks, um, Renato Gursi, uh, who is the Executive Secretary of Don Bosco International in Brussels and PhD candidate in uh, Youth Studies at the Salesian uh, Pontifical University uh, located in Rome, Italy. Today, he will talk uh, us more about the transitions, how young people grow up in a family and soon find themselves on a journey to build their own family. And he will tell us uh, what can make uh, youth transitions smoother in spite of the challenges that we are facing today. So after the presentation, uh, all of you are really welcome to ask questions. You have 15 minutes for that. And now I will, I'm honored to give a stage to Renato, go ahead. <laughs> thank you very much, Gather. Thank you very much for this introduction and thank you very much to all of you for uh, sharing this time together online, wherever you are. So uh, I prepared a few slides uh, with some pictures as well to facilitate myself in the presentation. So I will share my screen. Okay. If you have problems, just let me know. Otherwise, you should be able to see it. Okay. So I start so that we save some time for the questions and answers. Um, okay. Voila. Uh, as uh, Getter said, I'm today in Brussels uh, since August uh, 2019. I find myself here in Brussels. Uh, but I come from Rome, Italy, uh, where I lived uh, most of my life. And I also spent uh, one year, uh, one full year in uh, Paris because of an Erasmus exchange at the time of university. Uh, there I attended a master in European studies, uh, learning French language. And uh, now I'm still studying uh, because I'm completing, completing a PhD in youth studies uh, with the Salesian Pontifical University in Rome. Uh, hopefully next year I uh, should finish. Um, and uh, yeah, because lifelong learning is important, you know, so I keep on studying somehow. And I would say that the, the choice of this field of studies, uh, the youth studies, is a fruit also of my still short and limited professional career. So today with you, I would like to highlight the importance of peer support community services and intergenerational dialogue in youth transitions to adulthood. So I will share my personal experience and share also some reflections that may be useful for everybody. So let me start uh, from the next picture. Okay, this is a group of young animators and educators of the Don Bosco Youth Center in Rome, Italy. Here we were on a daily community retreat in the mountains, not far away from Rome. So Don Bosco uh, centers are called homes uh, because they are meant to be a place where young people can feel at home, can feel uh, what we call a family spirit. Because uh, around 200 years ago, Don Bosco created schools, colleges, shelters, and vocational education and training centers as well, especially for vulnerable young people. Uh, me and my wife, Benedetta, uh, she's there. Yeah, uh, we met thanks to Don Bosco Sports uh, summer camps, where we were both learning to become uh, respectively uh, basketball and volleyball trainers. So at the time I was studying international relations in Rome and she was studying medicine in Florence, Italy. So when we got married six years ago, uh, she moved from Florence to Rome. She came to Rome to start the specialization in public health. So when we decided to get married, I was still in a temporary job after one full year of internships in Rome. So in spite of these economic uh, uncertainties, we decided to move on. So uh, our family supported us, of course. But uh, we believed that opportunities for jobs would have come in the future, and they did. So in the time free from work, uh, as a young uh, couple, we both attended the Don Bosco Youth Center in Rome, where I grew up as a scout, a basketball player, basketball coach, and also as an educator of youngsters. We were able to learn from peers and older people as well in a community 
where we felt like in a family. And we were also able to give back what we had received by animating a group of youngsters as educators in the youth center. So as a young couple, we also had the chance of joining a group of young couples of the same community. Indeed, these other couples with young children were either volunteering as educators in the youth center or professionally working as educators in the youth care services attached to the center. So here we, once again, we are in this picture once again on a daily retreat out of Rome. This was, uh, I think, the picnic by the lake moment. Um, and I think that uh, spending time on a journey together with other families is very important to make this transition easier. So at a given moment, two years ago, with my wife, uh, we had the chance to consider the possibility to move to Brussels. We had already become parents of Irene, who is here, is hidden here, but uh, she um, she's now three, three years and a half. Uh, Benedetta was finishing her specialization in public health, so she was ready to embrace a new step in her career as well. And I had been working five years in the Don Bosco General House in Rome on international youth programs. So the three of us, we moved to, together to Brussels in August 2019, and now I'm working for Don Bosco International. My wife at this very moment is at home because we have recently become four. Uh, one month ago, indeed, Emanuele, was born here in Brussels in the midst of this pandemic, uh, good news. And uh, here too, once again, we found a community with a family spirit. Here in Brussels, the Salesians of Don Bosco are older than the ones we knew in Italy, but they still welcome young students or professionals who are looking for financially sustainable solutions for accommodation while they complete their transition to adulthood. And Irene, who is grown, has grown up, she's attending the um, uh, Don Bosco Maternal School here in Brussels. And in my job at DBI, Don Bosco International, I still have the opportunity to meet groups of young people from Don Bosco schools and centers from all over Europe, from all over Europe who come here for study visits in Brussels in the European institutions, as you can see in these two pictures, for instance. So I can listen to the questions and the visions of young people on Europe, and I can explain to them what we try to do here in Brussels to advocate for better policies, promoting the social inclusion of poor and vulnerable young people and their families. And I have also now the opportunity to promote an internship for a young person in 2021. So in the next semester, I can make some advertisement moment. <laughs> 10 days ago, we published uh, a call for applications, which is closing at the end of November. Um, so you can go uh, on uh, Don Bosco International website and check if you want to know more about this opportunity. But uh, my message to you today would be that as far as it is possible, young people should be supported to develop a holistic, integral transition to adulthood. So growing is about choices, of course. And the transition from school to employment is key, that's clear. But I think that the narrative on youth transition, uh, youth transitions uh, should include families too. And so I think that uh, IFFD is working a lot on that and I thank you for that and I thank you all for your attention. I stopped sharing and I'm now ready to listen to your comments, questions. Um, thank you for this invitation. Thank you Renata for your uh, little presentation and congrats congratulations uh, on the birth of your child Emanuele. That is wonderful. Um, do we have any questions already, uh, Remy? Yes. Hi. Congratulations, indeed, for the birth of uh, of the baby. And hi, uh, thank nice you. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I have a question. Um, would you have comments on the difference between ge the the former generations? You know, the generation of our grandparents was not too much option in life choices, so. That I mean, they, they most likely they 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 a half of them would consider the advice of their parents or just do the same as their parents, and now the young the younger generations, 
they face a world where they are told that they can embrace endless possibilities. And that is great, of course, but that can be also a bit confusing and cause anxiety. That's, uh, uh, there is the, a risk of lacking orientation. So that's my, that's my question on, on your, uh, for your, you know, your experience and uh, how you dealt with this uh, issue. Thank you, Remy. And uh, yeah, I tried to, to reply somehow. I fully agree with, uh, with your evaluation of the situation of today's generation. I cannot say too much about the former generations because I only read about them and I listened maybe uh, from them, but uh, I don't really know how was it in the past, but uh, what we can imagine is that maybe it was, uh, there was not uh, the same mobility, you know, both geographically speaking and also in terms of uh, changing uh, profiles in the career, you know, so there was maybe less anxiety in these terms. But uh, there were challenges, of course, also in the past. Uh, it's difficult to, to tell about them for me. But uh, if I look at the present time, I really think that uh, we need also to promote uh, both intergenerational dialogue and also dialogue uh, between peers. So I congratulate also for initiatives like the one today, because uh, uh, every time I find an opportunity to share my personal experience also in terms of uh, uh, studies, professional career, <clears throat> and today also in a more holistic way. I'm always happy to do that. Why? Because I, if I think of myself a few years ago, I, I'm sure that I, I can tell that I would have uh, loved this kind of opportunities to learn from other people of my same age or a little bit older than me to learn about how they managed to to, to find their vocational uh, vocation in professional terms, but also in a broader understanding of this world. So um, I think that uh, we have to promote this kind of spaces and opportunities. Uh, and I did so also in a different context, uh, like uh, I think wherever we can open space for young people to, to learn and to see, we have to do that. Now I have this internship opportunity, I'm happy to do that, but it's only one place for the moment, you know. But uh, in the past, uh, I was a volunteer in the FAO in the UN in Rome. And when I was a volunteer there only for six months, was also unpaid internship volunteer program, you know, but uh, I managed with the office that I was working with to organize like uh, a full uh, day uh, visit, uh, study visit for young people who came to FAO uh, to ask questions to the officers and to learn about what they do what they do they, there every day uh, because uh, yeah i think that uh, everywhere we have the opportunity to open the space for young people to come in and ask questions we have to promote it indeed there's a lot of uh, anxiety it's clear because the multiplication of options doesn't mean that you can easily reach all of them uh, it can be also frustrating you know so um, so thank you very much for this kind of opportunities and for your question So we have a question uh, from Evan. Would you like to speak or I would just, uh, I can take it for you as well. Uh, he would like to know if you could tell us a bit more uh, what would we do during uh, this internship? Like he's inter interested in the uh, internship. What is it about? Yeah, thank you for this question. Um, indeed, uh, as I said, all the details are online. So you can uh, go into the news section of DBI website and uh, it's public uh, and quite transparent in this sense. It's very similar to um, a lot of um, other internships in uh, Brussels um, because um, many civil society actors like Don Bosco International organize uh, this kind of programs. And uh, we decided to open this internship as a, a way uh, of reacting to the pandemic. Why? Because uh, the pandemic you now is affecting a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for young people and uh, the 
in the fact that it's not possible to do physical events in Brussels anymore is uh, is putting limits no but uh, we want to react in a resilient way so the the idea is to promote uh, like a remote virtual internship in the beginning but with the possibility if the conditions are there also to come physically to Brussels and contribute to the work what the work is about. Uh, yeah, in Don Bosco International, as I said, is here to advocate for the social inclusion of children and young people uh, through education, especially. So we attend a lot of meetings, conferences, events. We also organize or co-organize events. Uh, at the moment, a lot of webinars, you know, that's why it can be do also remotely. Um, so that from your home you can connect and contribute. So the intern will uh, follow these kind of events. He, he or she will receive a, a training in the beginning on advocacy at the EU level. And then he or she will move uh, doing reports, preparing uh, policy papers, also with the freedom to suggest some new initiatives. Uh, it's a six months six month internship it's a part-time so that if you are studying you can do this internship only 24 hours per week and it's uh, quite flexible it's about coordinating with the executive secretary it's me and uh, so that we can monitor every week and every month that uh, this person does what is asked to do and no more than that so that he, she is free also to do another part-time job or uh, to continue his her studies. So that, that's more or less uh, what I can tell you now. And uh, we are, uh, you are welcome to apply and we will tell you about the results in early December. We start doing online interviews and this person will start in January. We already did a couple of internships in the last three years, but uh, they were in presence. Now, this is new because of COVID-19 pandemic, but we think it's a, a resilient way to react and to uh, have one person more uh, doing this uh, important job. Thank you. We also um, got a comment that uh, you should consider writing your autobiography <laughs> later to inspire, um, to inspire others. Thank you for the comment. I, I agree with I agree with that. Do we have any other questions from uh, from the public? Uh, I can make one then. Uh, what do you think? How uh, how to make sure that young people's like problems are actually heard? You do a lot of um, activities uh, to make this transition smoother, but how to make sure that? Um, they are actually heard and we deal with the problems that they are facing. Um, thank you for this question. Uh, how to make sure that they are heard? Uh, I mean, on the one end, I would say we have to provide space where they can have their voice heard, but this is can be quite rhetoric. I mean, it's about uh, also preparing young people to speak because uh, sometimes uh, it can be also tokenism, no? To to say, okay, we have one young person speaking and uh, is just repeating something prepared by someone else. So uh, it's very important to provide education and training to young people so that uh, they can also find themselves the way some somehow to to speak, to express their their problems, their suffering, their challenges, and uh, but even though there should be some room for creativity. And, um, and space for the, the initiative of young people themselves, I think they also need solidarity from other generations, from adult people. And um, it's important that uh, young people do not uh, limit themselves to the group of peers. It's important to provide opportunities for mutual uh, dialogue and listening. Uh, so that, that's what we try to do in our little uh, space and room for Manov. And uh, yeah, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's not easy, but I think that uh, it's not only about providing space for young people to speak, but also to prepare them to, to find the right way to express, providing them education opportunities, 
And so I think that the European Union, that, that's where we are uh, working and doing advocacy as DBI. It's a place that it's, can offer a lot of opportunities to young people. No? You know, the Erasmus program maybe, but also other international organizations can give young people uh, the tools to, to express their problems. And I think that this can, cannot be isolated from what happens at the local and national level. So the young people that come to Brussels are not coming out of nowhere. They should have a local experience and they should fight also to find a place in the local level and national level to, to speak. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense if it's only in, in these uh, organizations. No, Somehow they feel these organiza organizations a little bit far away from daily life. So we have to make sure that the connection is there. And I see there are other questions. Uh, yes, uh, Ignacio gave a good suggestion that you can easily turn on your camera and uh, participate. Uh, it's really welcome. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, Jose, I have, you have yeah. a question? Yeah, feel free. Hi, Renato, thank you for your... <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna ask you, since you're, you're at the European Union, which one of the initiatives or possible interventions that the European Union is thinking for that post-COVID era, would you kind of definitely voucher for and would definitely add or improve from your perspective on either transitions or youth mm -hmm. development? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Alex, and uh, for the, the question. And uh, I also replied to one question shortly that it's in the chat uh, before. Um, so there is a question from Chiara. If the internship is open to both masters and bachelor uh, degree students, it's open to both because I we didn't uh, want to to make uh, explicit limitation no to the applications. It will depend on the applications we receive because it can be also bachelor, bachelor degree student students. But uh, um, um, how to say no? It's uh, we don't want to limit because maybe we find a very enthusiastic and uh, a person who only has bachelor degree, but a lot of uh, different experiences, also informal ones. Uh, so it, it's uh, difficult to tell, no? But uh, uh, of course, the ones who have the master's degree, maybe they, they have more skills in one sense, but the, the, the call is open also for bachelor ones. Okay, and now I come back to the question of Alex. Uh, so the European Union, there are indeed a lot of programs and opportunities. Um, and there are two colors that are becoming very common uh, when they talk about the future after COVID, they're talking about the blue and the green. The blue is not for the sea and the water, but is for the digital. And the green is about the ecology on the one end and the sustainable development on the other end. Uh, so the blue and the green, uh, when it comes to recovery, the European Union is talking a lot about, uh, you know, the importance of uh, providing the new generations with digital skills and also green skills. Uh, so sustainable energy, sustainable development, um, but uh, our uh, concern as Don Bosco International at the moment in Brussels is also about uh, the, um, okay, together with the education and skills uh, agenda, we are also concerned about the new youth employment support initiative. Why? Because uh, luckily the European Union will put a lot of money in uh, these funds for uh, to support the young people in their transition from education to employment. They are uh, reinforcing a youth guarantee. They are launching a child guarantee for uh, poor families. And that's great. But we are concerned as Don Bosco International together with other organizations in Brussels because sometimes when there are these youth employment uh, initiatives, youth guarantees, the ones who profit the most out of these uh, in the, uh, of these uh, initiatives are the young people who are already equipped a lot and uh, who already have a lot of skills uh, who are just waiting for these kind of opportunities and th that's okay i mean it's not uh, a problem but the problem is 
that the ones left behind are the most vulnerable young people who are not in employment, education and training uh, from a long time. So we advocated and we will insist also at the national level so that young people with uh, most uh, difficulties who drop out of schools, um, they are not left behind at all. That um, in order to do this, uh, these measures should be also able to involve the organizations of civil society, the so-called uh, third sector, no? not only the companies and the public institutions, but also those civil society organizations who are more close to the daily life of vulnerable young people. And that's what we try to insist on at the moment. Thank you for your question. We have some questions in the chat. We can take some more. Uh, how many countries have you visited? Is one um, of the questions. <laughs> okay. How many countries? Okay, before COVID, <laughs> because uh, after COVID, it's only Belgium and Italy during summer, but uh, I would say in the European Union, I think around 20 countries out of the 27 uh, what at the moment in the European Union and beyond Europe a few ones uh, only I think Guatemala, Panama People's Republic of China uh, Lebanon, Israel um, more or less that's it I think so <laughs> still a lot of uh, countries to visit and things to learn but I you have a lot of experiences from, from different uh, cultures and countries that is wonderful and also uh, there is a question uh, about uh, what could be the best advice uh, you could give uh, to your younger self. I wish I had known that. Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful question. So congratulations for the question. I'm not sure I know the answer, but I, um, I would say, yeah, that, uh, okay, it's important to study a lot. So. I studied hard, I think, but I would say to myself, you have to study even harder than you did. <laughs> but uh, I would confirm to the younger myself that, um, that the relationships are very important, that uh, love is important, and uh, one and should uh, build his life also, uh, especially on that, you know, love friends relationship and maybe i would uh, tell myself that i, I should have uh, um, take more care of this relationship and friends sometimes but uh, it's important to rely on this uh, and and to find look always for support uh, from friends communities that's really important families um, yeah and to and to, yeah, beyond uh, studying more than I did, also doing more than I did to to give back what I received. Yeah, that's it. I, I'm not sure that the book would be, the autobiography would be the solution, but <laughs> this kind of opportunities like today, I think can be inspiring for other people. And it's also inspiring for me to listen to your stories. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you know that time is of the essence in these meetings. So I'm afraid we have reached to the end. But just before finishing, I would like to ask you if it will be OK, because I've got some suggestions to have these meetings in the European evening. So if we moved it in the future from, say, 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock, five hours later, can you raise your hand if you are OK with that? or? Or don't if you if you don't. Okay, I see one, two, three, four. Still not very much. While you do that, I'm going to share here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. I think everyone. I don't know about Chiara, for instance, if she would agree. Or, or Catherine is very important because she's going to be the next one, <laughs> by the way. So, okay, so I think we will try this, okay? 
for the future so that everyone can can attend, everyone who couldn't attend today. Thanks very much, Renato. Thanks very much, Geta. And thanks very much to all of you. Hope Thank you, Ignacio. You. Thank you, Geta. Thank you, everybody.